is Pastor Chris at True Life Fire. Hope you've had a great day. Hope you've had a great weekend. I appreciate you tuning in tonight to tonight's sermon. I got an encouraging sermon ready for you. But before we get to the sermon, I'm going to sing a song that I ain't got time for you, devil. And you know, this may seem like a song that I sing a lot all the time when I decide to sing on here. I got to be careful because Facebook don't want you uh, putting music on here too much. And I don't want to lose sermons. But I'm going to sing this ain't got time for you, devil, tonight. Because it's time that some of us took a stand and told the devil, not today, Satan. Amen? Not today, Satan. So, Christopher, go ahead. I ain't got time for you, devil. One night when I was sleeping, the prison's in my room. I looked down in front of my bed, there stood Mr. Boo. He tried to put his fear on me, but I heard him start to weep. Then I spoke the name of Jesus and I went right back to sleep. Ain't got time for you, devil. Don't waste your time on me. Ain't got time for you, devil. Cause Jesus lives in me. Ain't got time for you, devil. Don't waste your time on me. Ain't got time for you, devil, cause Jesus lives in me. Well, that devil's like a lion, he's roaming to and fro. He's seeking who he may devour, he's trying to steal my soul. But the line of Judas in me, I have nothing now to fear. Satan, you have lost control, so get on out of here. Ain't got time for you, devil. Ain't got time for you, devil, cause Jesus lives in me. Ain't got time for you, devil, don't waste your time on me. Ain't got time for you, devil, cause Jesus lives in me. I said that devil is a liar, man, but you think and I'll tell when he says he's got you, just send it back to hell. Jesus with the devil, and he showed him who was boss. To the keys that death held and the grave, he says, the foot you lost. The devil's not too smart, you know, showing up at every turn. I can smile and go on by, seems the devil never learns. Ain't got time for you, devil. Don't waste your time on me. Ain't got time for you, devil, cause Jesus lives in me. Ain't got time for you, devil, don't waste your time on me. Ain't got time for you, devil, cause Jesus lives in me. I said that devil is a liar, man, what you think and I tell when he says he's got you, just send him back to hell. Jesus with the devil, and he showed him who was false. With the keys that death held and the grave, and says who put you lost. But the devil's not too smart, you know, showing up at every turn. I just smile and go on by, seems the devil never learns. Ain't got time for you, devil. Don't waste your time on me. Ain't got time for you, devil, cause Jesus lives in me. Ain't got time for you, devil, don't waste your time on me. Ain't got time for you, devil, cause Jesus lives in me. Ain't got time for you, devil. Amen, 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 amen. Ain't got time for you, devil, because who? Jesus lives in me. Amen. I ain't got time for you, devil, because Jesus lives in me. As I'm said, I'm glad that you're tuning in today. I got a question for you. How many of you that are watching, if you'll leave some com uh, feedback, some comments, how many of you would be interested in sitting in on a Zoom meeting 
church meeting. And I want the honest truth. I want you, your opinion on it if you'd be interested. Because the past couple of Sundays, we didn't do it last Sunday, but the past couple of Sundays, we've actually been sitting in a Zoom uh, meeting church service uh, in Ronsford, West Virginia. And it's really cool. It's the same church I went to and I preached that those years, uh, a couple years ago when we was on vacation. So if you'd be open to the idea of a Zoom meeting church meeting, just let me know. Because we're uh, thinking about trying it out and seeing how it goes. And we get enough people that want to participate in it. Uh, uh, if you have your Bibles and you want to turn into the book of Isaiah 54, 17, we're going to get this sermon underway. This, the first part of, part of the scripture is scripture that we all know. And usually this is all something that we should live by and understand. But the latter part of the scripture is usually not, you don't hear it as much. Because the first part sums everything else up. Amen. And you're going to see what I'm talking about in just a few moments. But it's Isaiah 54, 17. And if you have it in your Bible, say amen. 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 Well, starting at verse 17, Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. We always hear that. And I'm going to read it one more time. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness of me, saith the Lord. If you bow your heads, we're going to pray. Lord, we thank you for this night you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I ask that you let this message be a seed planted in someone's life today, God. And I ask that you allow me to be a vessel. Let the words that I speak come straight from you, Lord, and that they may hear your words, not mine, but your words, Lord. And I ask that you will touch anybody and, and anybody that's under the sound of my voice at this time, God, no matter what they're going through, no matter what they may be facing, that you will touch them in accordance to your will and your purpose. And then while we're here, Lord, I ask that you will be with all the ones that are out there in the cold, that are being affected by the cold, that have lost power, God, all the way from West Virginia to uh, Texas, especially Texas, Lord, where they're having such a hard time with it, Lord. And I just ask that you will be with them, warm them up, and get their power restored. And we love you and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, pray. And the church say amen. 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 Yeah, Texas got it rough right now over there with their the, their power grid and the freezing temps that they've, that they've got going on. I actually heard a couple days ago that this is the first time in history that Texas has actually had a winter storm warning. So definitely keep them in your prayers and anybody else that's, that's affected, like the homeless that have no place to warm to lay down amen but the title of this message i would like to preach to you may sound like a silly message it may sound like a silly title but it's important and i want this message to encourage you today but today i'm, I'm going to be preaching on the topic the title called not today satan not today amen somebody say that with me not today satan not, not today. today satan amen Amen. Not today, Satan. In our scripture reading that we read that there is no weapon formed is going to prosper against us. That any weapon that may be formed is not going to prosper against us. And every tongue that shall judge against you, is going to, you can condemn that. And it's the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness of me, saith the Lord. And you know, like I said earlier, most of the time when we read this scripture... This verse, the first thing you read, is all the only thing you read that says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And that's all you hear. But the, when we drop the ladder and we just keep the no weapon formed part. No weapons formed against you will prosper. So back off. Not today, Satan. Amen. You know, the devil is like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Amen. 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for someone to knock down. He's looking for someone to keep down. He is looking to destroy your life. He's looking to destroy my life. Amen. He doesn't want you to succeed. He doesn't want you to be successful. He wants to block everything that's good and everything that is true. Amen. Mm -hmm. He wants to destroy you. He wants to block any blessing that God wants to bestow you. Woo. Amen. Amen. That's what he wants. He don't want to see you successful in life. 
He don't want to see you being uh, to succeed in anything that's good and true. He's trying to devour you. He's trying to devour me, your mama, your daddy, your grandma, your grandpa, your brother, and your sister. He's trying to destroy you. We need to get that in our mind today. He's trying to destroy us. He wants you. He wants to see you fall. He wants to see you fail. But I'm going to stand up and say, not today, Satan. Not today. Oh, no. No, sir, not today. A lot of times when it seems you're doing well, it seems like things are going the, the way it needs to go, and he's going to slam a door on you. Amen? <laughs> yeah, Whitney's already laughing. She knows where this is about to go. He'll slam the door and he tells you, I ain't, you, I'm not letting you pass. I'm not letting you go. <clears throat> you're not going anywhere, boy. And he'll literally slam the door right in your face. Or shoulder. Or elbow. You may be saying shoulder, elbow. There's a story soon to follow. And you'll understand. <laughs> he likes to try to stop you in your tracks because he knows if he can stop you, you ain't moving forward. You hear me? If he can stop you, he knows you're not moving forward. You're not making progress. And while that's going on, while you're unable to make progress, it's easier for him to force you to make a couple steps back. It's easier for him to know that you're going to fall quicker, that you're going to fail quicker. Amen? It's easier to take steps back when you can't move forward. Right? Right? Almost like I just thought about that. You've seen that movie Shrek, and they're going over into the castle, and they've got the stinking uh, the bridge going across the big old lake of fire below the castle. And Shrek's trying to get across there to, to save Princess, uh, Princess Fiona. And Donkey's scared to death, but he's over there making the, the, the bridge shake. Amen. And they're going across. And then Shrek's like, you're already halfway there, Donkey. And then he's like, yeah, but I know this half is safe. Amen. I, don't, I just thought about that. The devil wants to do anything he can to keep you from moving forward. And in that case, it was Shrek that was scaring Donkey. He's like, it's easier for me to go backwards than to make progress and do what I've got to do, which is save Princess Fiona. Does that make sense? I know it's kind of silly, but it just crossed my mind that that's how it happened. It was easier for Donkey to want to go back because he knew that side was safe. We're supposed to be warriors of God. Well, that's a whole other sermon right there. We ain't got time to be scared. And we got we to gotta prog progress. Amen. We got to move forward. But anyways, that's what the devil likes to do. He likes to make you uh, take steps behind you so you can't move forward. Anyways, he likes to lurk around the corners and he tries to entrap you the best he can. He would do anything to see you fall, even slamming a door on you. Before we move any further, I want to tell you a story of what happened yesterday. You're going to understand this whole this whole thing about doors slamming on your in your face, doors slamming into your shoulders, hitting your elbows. We went to pick up a few things from Walmart, and I'm not going to mention which Walmart we was at in case they're looking for me. <laughs> which I don't know. You'll see. You'll see what's going on. So we go in and we grab what we need, and we're leaving. Everything was fine. Everything went smooth. And we left, we go get lunch, and remember that Whitney needed some fog light bulbs for her car. That, then we looked on the Walmart app, and they were in stock. So we decided we're going to go back to Walmart, we're going to grab these fog lights to put in her car, because they've been out for some time. Well, one of them was, but you know it's best to replace in pairs, so we're going to replace both of them. So we find the bulbs, and the price is a little bit different on the website than it is in store. So we make a trip to the customer center and they, and we, and the, so they price match it. So we get the price that we were actually looking for. Oh, excuse me. And we bought the bulbs at a better price. Well, as we're walking out the door, well, not, we hadn't got to the door yet. We're walking towards the door. This elderly lady's in front of us. And she literally almost walked right in front of the door because I guess the sensor didn't pick her up. And she was probably like inches away from like slamming her nose into the door. So something obviously wasn't going on, wasn't right with the door in the first place. And she, like I said, she literally almost ran into it. And my line went and she almost ran into the door. 
And then she kind of like took a small step back and I guess it registered and the door opened. Well, I mean, we're just like a couple feet behind her. So we're falling, we're going out the door right behind her. And as we proceed to walk out the door without warning at all, all of a sudden there was this loud, wow, sound. And I felt the door slam into my shoulder. That door shut with such speed I've never seen in all my life. If only the cashiers at Walmart were as fast as this door, things would be a lot better. Amen? But we're walking through here. And I say, when I say it was fast, I didn't realize the door was closing. I just felt like I was too stupid to walk through a door. I didn't walk through the door. I walked in two of the door. Amen? It slammed right into my shoulder. It hit Whitney's elbow because we're kind of side by side, so we walk it through at the same time, and it hits her elbow and slams into my shoulder. Amen. My shoulder hit the door, and it made such a loud sound. I didn't realize what was going on. This is like how fast it happened. There was no reason for the door to be shut, and it literally just opened. Amen. It just opened. Whitney and I, we walked through the door. Her elbow gets hit slightly. And she thought the sound that it made was from her elbow. Lord have mercy. If that had been her elbow and it made that sound, it had been broke right now. i tell you that now. <laughs> this is a true story. It sounds like I'm making this story up. But it is a true, honest to God story here. That this really happened. The only thing that broke was the door itself when it hit my shoulder. I literally knocked the stinking outer door off the stinking track probably six inches because it the only thing that broke was the door and i immediately started thinking that that's how we should treat satan when he comes in up trying to knock us down when he comes up trying to you know we should try we should just bust him a new one amen did you hear what i said we should just bust him a new one if you're trying to knock me down i'm gonna say not today satan i'm gonna knock you down amen Time to stand our ground against Satan. The door tried to close on me, but it didn't stop me. I kept going. Amen. It may have slowed me down a little bit, but little progress is better than no progress at all. You hear me today? It may have slowed me down, but I kept moving. And as I said, I'm also glad it didn't slam in the Whitney's elbow as hard as it slammed in my shoulder. Because we probably at the ER. It hit with such a force. And you can ask anybody in this room that witnessed it, the sound that it made when, when it slammed into my shoulder. Amen? The door wasn't okay, but it's okay. Amen? Thank God we are okay. We didn't get hurt. The door was hurt, but we're fine. Yeah, my shoulder feels fine. It's good. I'm good to go. But in a way, I kind of fixed the door because... Even after we didn't walk all the way to the car and was leaving, the door was still wide open because it couldn't shut. So I feel like I fixed the door and I saved somebody from um, either running into it or just shutting on them, an elderly woman or a young child. I couldn't imagine if they had done that to that elderly lady that was in front of us. Because I mean, it shut so fast. And that's how we have, that's how, that's how it seems to happen in life with us. When things go wrong, it seems like it happens in an instant. And that's all it takes is one blink of the eye and you don't see what's going on and you're blindsided. Amen? But we have too many times in our lives where the devil shows up and starts to wreak havoc in our own lives and we won't stand up against him. Amen? However, we can't give the devil all the credit here. Sometimes the havoc that goes crazy, that wreaks in our own lives is from poor choices and decisions we make in life. Amen? It's not always the devil. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We don't have to fight alone. We don't have to live alone. We don't have to go through it alone. He'll be with us. Amen? He will be with us. And when the devil shows his ugly face, we got to do like b shock says. Kick him in the tooth. Amen? You remember that song? Just kick the devil in the tooth. Dance on top of the devil's head. And as Jesus told Satan in the wilderness, get thee behind, Satan. That's Matthew 4.10. This is when uh, Jesus was taken up into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 
But then he saith, uh, then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He's in the destroying your life business and God's in the building you up business, making you a somebody business. Amen? Completely uh, the contrast of one another. The devil's trying to destroy you. And God's trying to lift you up and build you up. Even when things get tough, even when things begin to hurt, he is with you. And remember, no weapon formed against you will prosper. However, I got to mention something. It never says that the weapon isn't going to be formed or made. Did you hear me just then? The weapon form's not going to prosper. It doesn't say it won't be formed. It doesn't say it won't be made. And it never says the weapon ain't going to be made. It just says it ain't going to be successful. It ain't going to prosper against you. Amen? Thank God and praise God for that. Those moments in life when things get hard, we have to press on. I'm going to tell you one more story, and I'm going to get ready to close here. One more story. The second trip to Walmart, if you remember, we bought some light bulbs for Witness Fusion. Well, we get home after uh, uh, we get home, and after a bit, I begin to work on putting the fog lights in her car. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, on the 2010 Ford Fusion, putting fog lights in a car ain't easy. Okay, it's not easy. It's not like being able to reach behind under the hood, reach down there, and pull the bulbs out, the sockets out, and replace them. Oh no, it ain't easy at all. You got three pins you got to remove on the inside of the fender. And then on the bottom, there's like five or six uh, screws you got to take out to pull a piece back. Just to be able to reach your hand in this tiny little space to get to the socket. The problem is, once you do that, you don't have the room to maneuver. So you're kind of laying on the ground, you're like doing this with your hand. It's all like, eh. can't see what you're doing. I'm sitting there trying to pull the other part back so I can kind of get a glimpse of what I'm going by the time I see what I'm doing, I'm starting to get jelly on. Oh, my arm's getting tired. It was rough. Your, your arm's getting skin up. Your hand's getting tore up. It's because you're trying to fit your arm in there in a space that just ain't supposed to be, nothing's supposed to be in there. Hey Amen. The driver's side bulb probably took me 35, 40 minutes on its own to replace. I'm not even going to lie to you. You may have had a better way of doing it. You more man than I am. I'll give you that. That was rough. The passenger side, the process was the same, but it was much easier because I was able to turn it with my left hand. I could get my hand in there a lot better. It, I probably got it done in seven or eight, ten minutes. It didn't take long at all. And I absolutely destroyed my right hand and arm trying to wedge it in places that hands and arms aren't supposed to be, quite frankly. It hurt. My hands look like this. So her fog lights can look like that. And there's the picture that you can see. That's what it looks like. You probably can't see right now. It don't look as bad as it did, but my hand got buggered up. And I told you that story to add a scripture as I get ready to close. I want to make this connection that even though it gets tough, it's going to be worth it in the end. Even though it gets tough, it's going to be worth it in the end. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. In life, when the devil fights us, when things get hard and they, and they hurt, as in Saul and those fog lights did, we know that things work together for our good. To them that love God and those that are called according to his purpose. It hurt like crazy trying to put them fog lights in, especially the driver's side one. But in the end, she has a working fog light again. Amen. It was worth it in the end. I know it sounds crazy, but that's kind of how my sermons work. They, I make connections with real life things. I don't want to search the internet and find a story to, to use as an illustration. I'd rather use real life experiences. Amen? And through that, when I was on that ground, blocking the driveway, because I don't know if you know, we share a driveway with our neighbor. I didn't know if she was going to be pulling up or not. I'm sitting there saying, God, please give me strength to get this thing in there. Not today, Satan. 
I'm getting these fog lights in there. I refuse to give up. Amen. I'm getting them in there. It is going to be worth it all in the end, y'all. Carson, it's going to be worth it. Christopher, it's going to be worth it. Whitney, me, yo, it's going to be worth it in the end. We just got to keep fighting, keep pressing forward, keep moving on. And I'm about to use some words that you may not think about when it comes to this life here. Your temporary fights. Your temporary pain. Amen. Temporary. Keep moving forward. Keep going. It's going to be worth it all some beautiful, happy day. Amen. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be worth it. And he's going to keep giving us the strength to be able to tell the devil, not today, Satan. Not today. Because every time the devil comes back, and there is scripture that says, if you res resist the devil, he'll flee. And he will, but he will always come back. But will we have Jesus with us to allow us to take a stand and say, not today, devil. Not today, Satan. Not today. Amen. Lord, we thank you for God, for everything that you're doing in our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings, the blessings that we don't even deserve, Lord. God, I ask that you will let this message hit somebody. Let it pierce them, Lord, that they will know that they need to take a stand and tell the devil not today. Lord, I can feel it in my spirit that there's somebody out there that needed this message, Lord. I can feel it right now, God. And I just ask that you will let that message hit them. Get to them right now, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. And Lord, I ask that you will let this uh, grow. Let it water. I don't care who comes in and waters it, Lord, but you let this be a seed planted. Because it makes no difference who waters it, Lord. If it's another pastor, that's fine with me, Lord, as long as that seed gets water. And we thank you, Lord, for it. Anybody that's under, my sound, under the sound of my voice, God, touch them, Lord. Move in their lives. Whatever they may need, God, I ask that you will touch them according to your will and your purpose. And we love you, and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church said amen. 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 Not today, Satan. Say that one more time before we get off here. Not today, Satan. Not today, Satan. Amen. Not today, Satan. Like today I'm putting my foot down. Not today, Satan. That I will stand and I will fight. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you got something out of this message today. And keep in mind what I asked at the beginning. If you're just tuning in, uh, that uh, if you're interested in maybe joining a Zoom church meeting with us, just please let us know in the comments. Whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, just let us know what you think if you're interested. And we may try to get that going. And we may try to organize that. So just let us know. If you have prayer requests, you can always, as always, post them below. And we will always pray over your prayer requests. Amen. Well, we love you guys. God bless you. And we'll see you on the next one. Take care.